All right, everyone, Russian bots are now telling people that they shouldn't want more gun control because everyone knows it would make perfect sense for the Russians to want a well-armed U.S. population. You know, they plan to, like, destroy us and, you know, take us over, I guess, at some point in the future. That's what, you know, the logical conclusion would be. If you believe that they're screwing around with us at all, the goal is to destroy us. Uh, so, you know, obviously they, they want to, you know, continue the USSR plan of, well, eventually we'll nuke them and we'll take all their land and stuff. Okay, that'd be uh, much easier, wouldn't it, if people were disarmed? <clears throat> I would think that having a well-armed population would probably be a problem uh, in that sense because, you know, even the survivors probably in the rural areas would outnumber their military 10 to 1. So um, that makes a whole lot of sense. But now the establishment is attempting to carve uh, a new uh, era into their little Russia narrative. Now they're saying, well, yeah, the, the Russians provably interfered in 2016. Now what proof we have? Who knows? They, they bought Facebook ads. They run bot accounts. In other words, they're doing what they've been doing for 10 years, including when Obama won twice. It was already happening then. Look, it was pre-Obama that they announced that the U.S. Air Force had its own bot accounts. Don't you think the Russians by then probably had the same general idea? Oh, this might come in handy. We can target some U.S. corporation. We can use these accounts. We, we can target some politician who voted to uh, embargo one of our allies. Fucking of course they're doing that. That's not election interference as most people would imagine it. It's not hacking. It's not even, strictly speaking, it's not even a standard form of propaganda. Because it's going to be difficult to tell, uh, I would assume, the bots from actual people who happen to be saying the same thing. Because if you've got a dichotomous issue within the U.S. population, you're going to get the vast bulk of people who care about it enough to talk about it online at all will fall into one of two dichotomous camps. Occasionally you have a free thinker, an independent voter, uh, someone who's just bitter and apolitical and, and doesn't give a crap about either party, and they'll say something different. Mostly, though, people fall into very neat little football team categories. It's dumb. They shouldn't. They should know better. In such a situation, if one of those sides is being propped up by Russian bots, yeah, it's going to look like a whole lot of bots are in operation because you're probably going to think that some of those regular average people there, those uh, regular U.S. citizens, nothing to do with Russia, are, are actually bots. I've been called a Russian bot dozens of times by people on the far left when I comment on like Facebook articles and I say, well, you know, this article is bogus, here's why. Or this article is, you know, immoral, here's why. Oh, bot, you know, report and ignore. Oh, no, Russians are here. It happens all the time. But yeah, um, I think what they're actually saying at this point, um, they're saying, well, the midterms will be influenced by the Russians. I think that's uh, evidence that they expect the possibility of losing. In other words, that establishment candidates, not just Democrats, but mostly in this uh, coming election, uh, will not uh, retake the Senate and the House. Like, the Democrats will, will lose. Uh, the rhinos will suffer losses. Some of Trump's people will do well. And they'll say, well, the Russians love Trump. See, this is evidence that the Russians like Trump. They interfered in the election and the Democrats lost. No, it couldn't just be, you're broke. You're stupid. You don't have a platform. Your candidates suck. No, that'll be the reason the Democrats suffer in the midterm elections. But they're going to blame it on Russia because they have been. <clears throat> They've been blaming everything on Russia. DNC emails get leaked. It almost certainly did not involve Russian uh, hacking. Uh, their server was easily cracked into any employee, any rogue employee. You know, his name might have been Seth Rich. Maybe it was something else. Some rogue employee probably grabbed the emails because they were a Bernie fan. And they read through some of them. You know, maybe they were just doing it because like, oh, you know, I think I'll pick through people's laundry a little bit. You know, I think I, I, I want to do, I want to play James Bond here. So I'm going to look through their private emails. Haha. -ha. You know, it's not going to be hard for somebody who has any tech knowledge, uh, considering the password was Obama 08, hadn't been changed. That's really fucking hard to guess. They go in, they see Bernie Sanders is getting shafted. The Clinton campaign is openly working with MSNBC and CNN. They're like, well, this doesn't seem fair. So they wrap it all up, put it in the USB, mail it off to WikiLeaks. Oh, but WikiLeaks are Russians too. So, so Russians hacked uh, the DNC. They then, inexplicably, despite the fact that they already have those emails, they then give it to another supposedly Russian front. Uh, Russians then attempt to infiltrate the Trump campaign, offer his son all sorts, son-in-law all sorts of stuff. Uh, he's controlled, to lock, stock, and barrel, he's controlled by Russia. Oh, just uh, ignore Cody Shearer, the DNC operative, talking to Russians to try to get dirt on Trump. 
Just ignore Uranium One. That's a that's a phony scandal. That's a nothing burger. It doesn't matter whatsoever. The FBI did investigate it years ago, but trust us, it's nothing. Yeah, you know, there's a total total coincidence that a bunch of Russians give money to the Clinton Foundation around the same time that the Uranium One deal goes through the you know the Hillary Clinton State Department. That makes perfect sense. Totally nothing there. Uh, no, they're trying to cover their asses. They're trying to scapegoat Russia for when they lose. That's what this looks like to me. I don't even chalk it up to anything further. Like, oh, oh, they're trying to start, you know, World War III or something. Nah, it's, it's a little conspiratorial. I think what they're doing is they've already made a mistake. They hyperpolarized the political climate uh, already by dragging the Mo Russia bullshit in in the first place with WikiLeaks, the DNC leaks. Clinton's email server, bot, you know, supposedly bot accounts, aka any account online that you encounter that you disagree with, it must be a Russian bot or a Nazi or, so, or, or something like that, a Chinese bot, maybe it's from Uganda, maybe it knows the way, who knows, uh, but it can't possibly be one of your fellow citizens, well, no, a true American would never say that we don't need more gun control, a true American would never say maybe we want to scale back our intent in Asia and not start World War III, a true American would never say X, Y, and Z, that's what it boils down to, I mean, it's bullcrap. The problem is the Democrats started this, and now it's spiraling out of control and they have to stick with the narrative. It would be difficult, I think, at this point, for the DNC to come out and be honest and say, no, we're not, we didn't give our servers to the FBI because there was no Russian incursion into the servers. A lot of people forget that very, very important detail. Our intel agencies never even examined the servers, and yet they came out and said, oh yeah, Russia probably did it. So in other words, the DNC that can't secure a server is telling you that the Russians did it. You're just going to believe them. You don't need the FBI to look into it. You don't need the NSA to look into it. You don't even need a private firm to conduct any analysis. Just the DNC, because the DNC, after all, is a tech organization. That makes a lot of sense. They're like Microsoft. They're like Google. They would know. No, they don't know. That's the problem. Uh, they come out. They either don't know and, and, and they're ignorant, which, which is a real problem, although that would explain their uh, campaign strategies over the last couple of years. It would explain, you know, going to the midterms, why they don't have any money or indeed a, a clear party leader other than maybe Nancy Pelosi. That'll get them very far. Yes, it's a wonderful idea. I mean, Elizabeth Warren, yeah, it's, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time to be a Democrat, I'm sure. Uh, they're looking really, really strong. You know, they're looking strong because they've, uh, in, in, they've got fake inflated muscles. Really, though, you pop it with a pin, and they deflate, and then you see what's really behind it. Um, no, the, the Democrats, I think, started a little white lie to try to cover up the fact that, whoops, you know, we were inept, and yeah, all these emails are real. You know, they pretended that they weren't even real at the, uh, the outset. They said, well, we won't confirm that these are even DNC emails. No, well, I haven't looked at them, said Podesta when he came out. He comes out on CNN, well, I haven't looked into them. Yeah, maybe they're not real. It's probably manufactured stuff, so don't look at it. Uh, CNN then comes out, oh, don't read them, it's illegal. You know, if they were fabricated, that wouldn't be the case. Brazil comes out and says that they were stolen, so she won't talk about them. Well, that, that sounds an awful lot like an admission that they're actually DNC emails. Of course, now we know, yes, indeed, they are real. The Podesta emails were real. Um, and, and it shows a frightening level of coordination between the Democratic Party and the media apparatus, and yet they still lost. And that's during an election which they took in a lot of money, when they did have a clear leader, not a good one, but at least they did have, technically speaking, a figurehead, Hillary Clinton. They don't have a figurehead, and they don't have any money right now. I think that they're worried about the midterms. Naturally, they want to blame their impending loss on the nation of Russia instead of owning up to the truth, which is that they're inept. They're a party without direction. They, they have to fall back on their deep state bullshit assets. People in the corporate media, propaganda arm, uh, people, rhinos like John McCain. And John McCain's been working with them this whole time. He doesn't like Donald Trump. He probably, he's dumb enough to actually believe the Cold War hype of the, of my reds under the bed. He's probably, his brain is scrambled, as we all know. Maybe he actually believes his own bullcrap. Um, that would explain why he basically sounds like Hillary Clinton at this point. Looks a little bit like her, too. It's all bullcrap, though. This is propaganda. They are setting the stage for explaining away their impending loss to try to keep the party loyals from co totally losing control and schisming off in a million directions. They're trying to maintain the Democratic Party and the Never Trump sort of core, old guard, you know, Reagan to Romney era Republicans. 
that failed aspect of the Republican Party that has lost more and more support over time become increasingly non-conservative, increasingly accepting of high taxes, accepting of, of gun control, accepting of globalist bullshit, accepting that Angela Merkel should be you know, able to overrule the President of the United States. So we need to globalize things so people don't think that we're unkind. So that people, we, America first, oh, that's a racist platform. American is obviously a race. You know, but race doesn't exist, but America doesn't exist. We don't want borders, but we're evil for having these borders and, and we're evil people. So we should, you know, uh, and, and the Europeans, that's, that's bad too, but we need to listen to them because they're perfect and, and Angela Merkel's perfect. It's such a confusing, convoluted mess that you have that it's no wonder that they've begun to lose steam, but it's all Russia's fault. It couldn't, it's never their fault. They're perfect.